Well, I think the pints are potentially a lot more educated than they used to be, and they're also they seem to be coming in with bigger and better ideas. That's you. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ed educated clientele aspect of it is, is probably the biggest. And it's kind of funny because, you know, that education runs both ways. You know, they, they learn a lot more about what the tattoo process is about, but they also learn that they need to have, like, their dead grandfather included in the tattoo somehow. Um, but uh, by and large, I think any, any tattoo shop owner is going to tell you that business is better because of it. Well, not any, but you know, most most decent ones. Uh, I think that 20 years ago, your average person, the idea of walking into a tattoo shop uh, was intimidating. Um, you know, it was this sort of dark place with this mysterious buzzing sound coming from it. And it was filled with pirates and gypsies, and who knows what kind of weird things are going on in there. Where now they've got a picture in their head of what a tattoo shop is about and what a consultation means and that they should be looking for a portfolio. Um, they couldn't have known this before. I mean, when I got my first tattoo, I made all the same stupid mistakes that we like to joke about that your average dummy coming in off the street will make. And knowing that, I realized it's not because they're dummies, it's because they just don't know. How could they know? But now there's ways for them to know. Um, of course, the TV shows are going to show a certain take on it. And uh, now for instance, one time I did a, a guest thing on uh, LA Inc. And my sister Hannah and I were about to do this back piece. And the lady we were doing the piece on was a, a client of mine, a regular, who had already got the sleeve on. And as we were about to go onto the set, the, this junior producer comes up and says, OK, well, here's how it goes, all right? When your client comes in, you have to pretend you've never met her before. And you're going to have a consultation, and then she's going to leave. And when she comes back, you're going to present her with a drawing. And first of all, she had a sleeve for me. You know what I mean? How am I going to pretend that I've never met her before? Second of all, no, tattoo artists do not crank out back piece drawings while their client is out having a cigarette. That's just not how it works. And we don't want to be giving that false impression because uh, then people will think that there's some kind of voodoo magic going on. It's not just all these hours of hard work we're going to a drawing. Um, and so I actually had a fight with her. I was like, listen, you can make as much of an ass out of yourself as you want, but not me. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Sorry. Uh, they actually had to call an emergency meeting with their money people in New York to get permission for the original plan that my sister and I had, which was... I was going to greet the client at the door like I actually knew her, look at our sleeve and he'll introduce her to Hannah, and then show her the various stages of this collaborative drawing that we've been emailing back and forth. We made a point of bringing along the originals so that we could lay them all out on the countertop and show her. So we got permission, grudging permission to do that, which we did, and then they were like, man, that was great! Like they just couldn't anticipate that an idea that mere tattoo artists would come up with would be good enough for television. So there's a certain amount of that, you know, this sort of uphill battle against just the, the TV mentality, you know, they, these producers think that they've got all these new ideas that they are bringing to us, and it's the other way around. They're using our ideas, and, uh, you know, the success of the shows is based on the artists that are on them, not the other way around. Uh, and they don't grasp that, and they aren't ever going to grasp that. So it's just, it's part of the dark side of it. But at the same time, by and large, it's had a, a positive impact. So yeah, someone had asked earlier about reinventing the tattoo, and I was uh, about to go into my pitch about that. Right now, uh, the electronic edition is available in a beta, which means it's fully functional, but still a little rough around the edges in places. We're still fine-tuning the interface, and so beta subscribers are going to get a, a little bit of a discount on it because of that. But at the same time, we're hoping that you can help guide us towards making it uh, the best educational experience possible by telling us ways that you'd like to see, uh, you know, things you'd like to see in the interface, or you know, even helping us with things like, oh yeah, when I click on figure 
two, three C, it takes me to the wrong picture, you know? Little things like that, mostly we've got ironed out, but uh, at this stage, um, we're still actively adding to the content. Now we're gonna be adding to the content from now on. It's a permanent work in progress. Um, but at this point, we're uh, just testing it. We wanna see how it works. We wanna make sure it works on everyone's phones and tablets. And so far, it's been uh, it's been great. The response has been great. The uh, content I've been uh, adding new chapters as recently as the other day. I've got another one that's ready to drop in. For those who've already been readers of uh, past editions of Reinventing the Tattoo, some of the differences you can expect to see in this, other than the fact that you can access it all on your phone. Um, the uh, content obviously has been updated. You know, things like the rotary machines and cartridges that are available now. That's that's a huge and very significant development that uh, was not even touched upon in the old, the 2009 edition because there was no such thing back then. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not doing a print edition of this new book because stuff is just moving too fast. I need something that can be uh, updated and uh, kept current. So. That's what we're doing with this one. The other thing that I think is, is a really big, uh, significant change is I'm no longer the only writer. It's no longer just my work in there. So you'll have to resubscribe every year, and we will be adding lots of new content. My goal is with this first year's subscription uh, that by the end of the year, you would never want to let your subscription lapse because there's going to be so much new stuff. So. Uh, you're not just going to be resubscribing to have access to the same old, same old every time. It's going to keep expanding, and uh, you're going to continue uh, having new uh, material in there every uh, every few weeks to months, depending on uh, the type of material. There will be premium content, you know, big things like the uh, cover-up seminar that I just uh, recorded recently. I still have to finish uh, editing that before it's ready to plug in. And then there will be smaller things like... Uh, you know, an artist whose work I admire, uh, I'll ask them to make a few comments about uh, uh, a piece that they've just finished, and they'll get uh, plugged in. There'll be things like that happening to it all the time. So uh, your subscription is going to be to an ever-evolving product. It's not just a, an e-book that you're having to keep paying for again and again. You're definitely going to get your money's worth, and it's my goal this first year to uh, demonstrate that to you.